Good morning. This is the Chucktown Wind Report Extended Outlook from Friday, July the 24th through Monday, July the 27th. So this week we've had this frontal boundary, this pesky boundary, sort of draped through the southeast region. And from the last couple of forecasts, I, I talked about this being an undulating frontal boundary. And what that means is when you have high pressure to the north and high pressure to the south, this boundary gets caught in the middle and it just sort of ripples in a wave-like fashion as these high pressures sort of uh, develop lobes to the east and to the west of centers uh, and cause this boundary to sort of ripple and fold and this has been problematic for the southeast region with thunderstorming in the afternoons going from west to east below the boundary uh, and then also an onshore flow from northeast or easterly flow to the north of it uh, and then what also another area that we are watching right now is this low off of the north carolina coast now yesterday this was in upstate south carolina uh, just north of where this very weak low is right now and I talked a little bit about this high pressure to the north kind of giving it a, a little bit of a top spin and then this high pressure to the south giving it a little bit of a bottom spin uh, this this high pressure to the north is actually it's fairly weak it's fairly modest it's only 1016 millibars so that's usually not really enough to get something going but if it does strengthen to 1020 or 1024 we're talking about moderate high pressure and what that basically means is that there's enough uh, air, stronger air sinking away from the center of this high pressure to feed into the, the convergence of the low pressures. And then what it is is it helps give that low pressure a spin. So right now this pressure, this low pressure is closing off the North Carolina coast, uh, gaining a little bit of momentum. I don't think it's going to have really much effect to our coastline. It's going to have more effects to the North Carolina coastline in lieu of winds and, and rains and storms, uh, but it should sort of continue to drift off to the northeast, so I'm not expecting this to be any kind of a, a major event. It may not even become tropical in nature, but it is something that we were watching. And we always have to watch with high pressure to the north, especially uh, with anything that builds to the north of these boundaries. So this this high pressure, the center, is, is going to drift down into the Appalachian Mountains over time, uh, these separate lobes may develop, but overall what's going to happen is this boundary is going to sort of sag down into Florida. And, uh, and I think it's just going to kind of fizzle out over time now that there's a lot of buzz on the internet about, you know, watching this entire area of low pressure, which could do something out off, off the coast once it enters the water, uh, over the next several days. And this is something to watch, but, uh, anything in formation is probably going to continue to drift away from the coastline, especially with this strong ridge of high pressure built over the Bermuda. Uh, we also have um, some upper level shearing going on, so the environment is really not that favorable right now for this area. Uh, and as we look, if we look at the earth.nullschool.net, we can in fact see a surface low, a closed low starting to develop. Uh, in between Cape Fear and Cape Lookout in North Carolina. Uh, so let's take a quick look at the upper level. We go to 500 millibars. And this is going up higher into the atmosphere. And you can see this jet sort of racing down. Looks like there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a dip in the jet stream. And the winds are becoming a little bit moderate over this area at the higher levels. And then as we go a little higher up, we'll probably see it come up even higher than that, um, significantly stronger. And there you go. So we're looking at a a large upper ridge of high pressure uh, really hammering down in this area in the upper levels of the atmosphere which would take any vertical stacking or cloud tops from any tropical developments that that are, are trying to get organized off the coast I would take those cloud tops and rip them up rip them off to the east so that's what we call upper level shear and that's why I'm not seeing this is it a favorable environment for surface flow to really hang on for any length of time because there's just not enough energy to get any kind of uh, thun heavy thunderstorming activity wrapped around a center so that's kind of what we're looking at for right now and if, if we look at the infrared loop we can actually see some of that shearing going on now you can see these cloud tops sort of expanding off to the east as this as that jet pulls down over the area and you can see the cloud tops really just getting pulled off uh, over here now in this this area down here off the Florida and Georgia coast it's a little bit further removed from that upper jet so like I said just an area to watch nothing to get excited about just yet uh, and the National Hurricane Center has not circled it for any um, potential development over the next five days yet so um, you know just something to watch so if we look at the radar for 
uh, North Car Southeast North Carolina, most of the shower and storm activities to the northeast of the center of the closed low. Um, and then if we look at our data scope model, looking at the winds, we're not really seeing a lot of, of, uh, of in the way of winds between the two capes. However, to the north, where the high pressure is coming down into that area from the northeast, uh, we're seeing a build up there. So expecting this build to push down over into the Cape Lookout area and possibly down to Emerald Island, Bogue Sound, uh, we could see that build push as far down as that and maybe even Cape Fear, but not expecting anything down into South Carolina. If anything, the boundary will probably get pushed a little bit to the south where we'll get more of an easterly feed at the surface and thunderstorming will continue from the west-northwest to the east-southeast as it's doing now from that Gulf Ridge that I talked about earlier. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to disable this and go into Charleston uh, for the wind observations. Once again, this is the Datascope professional viewer that we have with Weatherflow. Um, the other products that I like to use are WindAlert, iKiteSurf, uh, iWindSurf, SailFlow, and FishWeather. Uh, this one is Datascope, and it pretty much uses the same type of features for the weather uh, with some additional things. But uh, if we look at Charleston area, we're seeing a, a general modest westerly flow right now, a little bit stronger to Folly Beach. Uh, there was a little bit of a nocturnal jet earlier. Let's take a quick look at what that brought and we can see last night it went more of a west or west southwest nocturnal jet it got into the I'd say the low 20s and this is miles per hour not knots that we're working in right now so you can see a little bit of a westerly jet came up between 3 and 4 a.m. and it's gonna back down and then for today I'm gonna go let's see what the model guidance for Folly Beach is showing for this afternoon I have a feeling we're going to be talking about a westerly, a dominant westerly wind field that sort of starts to lean a little bit more northeast or east as that frontal boundary gets pressed to the south a little bit more. But let's see what the models put put out here. Give it just a minute to load. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to show you these models real quick. Now the CMC is the Canadian, GFS is American, WW3 is WaveWatch 3. That is a, a direct product of the GFS model, which is American. The WRF model is a higher resolution 5 kilometer. National Weather Service Marine Forecast. This is the North American model, 12 kilometer. The North American 5 kilometer. So when you talk about 12 kilometers, uh, and 0 0.5 degrees, these are lower resolution. That means that they're a larger area of scope that is uh, being induced into the into a model uh, through more and more data. But as we zoom into the area, uh, it starts to pick up more of the land and sea interface, especially from the sensors that we're pulling from right along the coast. These 5-kilometer and 3-kilometer models actually pull a little bit more water temperature and a little bit more of the land and sea interface features into these models. So that's the difference between what you see 0 0.5 degree, which is very broad, and down to 12-kilometer and 5-kilometer and down into 3-kilometer. It doesn't mean that they're going to be more and more... Um, correct it means that they're just pulling in more data so they tend to have more exactness overall uh, but it's just they're just there for guidance so as we can see today we're seeing this this westerly flow and and then the higher resolution models are actually turning this and clocking this wind field over uh, to more of an easterly flow this afternoon and you can see where models are really starting to have a lot of disagreement in what's going to happen this afternoon and that's in part because of this frontal boundary um, we, we just it's very it becomes a very tricky situation when uh, you have uh, an easterly flow to the north of the boundary and then you have a southeast flow to the south of it so the models are they're kind of all over the place but I think what we're going to end up having through the rest of the period all the way through Monday is this sort of a struggle between an easterly flow and a southeasterly flow uh, with a few it looks like even for tomorrow we could probably have a little bit of a, a backdoor sea breeze build off the east northeast winds uh, so we're, we're looking at models are starting to come into agreement for tomorrow afternoon with the gradient actually building tomorrow as the frontal boundary lays just to our south and the high pressure bites down into the southeast and, and produces sort of a mid or upper teens east-northeast flow. Um, so that is, that is definitely something to take a look at for tomorrow as we get into Sunday and Monday. I think we're going to see these kind of pulsing easterlies that could, that could fade as they go southeast or build a little bit on the east-northeast. Uh, once you get a little bit of a northerly element into an easterly wind field, you start to get the sea breezing effect as it becomes more east and southeast. 
the winds sort of fade out. You, you can get a, a tightened gradient from time to time, but with high pressure being so weak to the north, I'm not going to see that uh, happening through the period. So you just see this sort of general easterly flow through the period on the model guidance. So I'm going to go back to let's go back to our surface map. So let's let's wrap this up in a nutshell for the extended forecast. Watching this rippling boundary, watching high pressure to the north push down into it with an easterly flow. Uh, these low pressures uh, may slide offshore and provide sort of a north-northeast or northeast wind field at times, but overall I'm expecting these high pressures to sort of push down. This high pressure is going to drift down into the Appalachian Mountains. It's going to push this boundary to the south. It'll probably go over the Gulf Coast in Florida. Once this goes south of this, the residual troughing in the area mixed with this high pressure sort of feeding in an east-northeast or easterly wind field may actually give us a few pulses of that of that east-northeast wind for tomorrow. So let's say for today, I'm going to call for the westerly flow to prevail for a while with a more of an easterly lean later. Probably won't get anywhere over 10 knots. Uh, we could see a slight east-northeast build uh, on the backdoor sea breeze to low teens. So we're looking at about 10 to maybe 9 to 13 knots off of an east-northeast build. If otherwise, we'll, we'll stick to at or below 10 knots east or east-southeast. Uh, as we get into tomorrow, with this boundary sort of drifts a little bit over Georgia, we're going to be talking about uh, more of a mid-teens and maybe upper-teens east-northeast build for tomorrow afternoon as the sun peaks during or the, the daily heating peaks in the afternoon so sometime after late in morning we should start to see that wind start to pick up uh, and get that sea breeze oscillation. As we get into Sunday this boundary becomes further removed to the south and high pressure sort of edges a little bit closer and as the center of high pressure gets closer to an area the winds tend to die off so we're going to be looking at more of a sort of an easterly wind field um, maybe even east southeast and we're going to be sticking somewhere between 8 and 12 knots. I don't, I'm not expecting much more than that unless the high stays a little bit further removed over here and we actually get a continuance of some of those somewhat moderate east northeast winds. Um, we'll stick to 8 to 12 on the easterly zone. As we get into Monday even weaker as this boundary sits down here and begins to fizzle out uh, and this high pressure should remain at 1,016 millibars. If, if for any reason it does build to 1,020, we could see a stronger build. But otherwise, I'm going to say uh, another day of 8 to 12, not easterlies, into Monday. So very tricky situation with lots of moisture involved. Watch for thunderstorming scooting from west-northwest to east-southeast today. Um, and, and as this boundary keeps pushing south, we should see more an onshore flow. And with, a, with an upper jet pushing cloud tops from, from this direction, we could still see quite a bit of uh, thunderstorming and rain activity. Uh, even with the boundary to the south, we could still have some of this onshore uh, with the surface onshore flow. So just something to watch. Um, I think that's going to do it for the extended outlook and have a good weekend.